Your new team was announced the other day. Congratulations. How does it feel? Yeah, it's good. I mean, um, it feels like it's been, I've been waiting a while for the, for the announcement. So um, it's nice that it's out there now. Um, and yeah, I don't have to um, keep it a secret. So yeah, no, it's, it, it, it's good. Um, I sorted it out quite a while ago, but it's, it's great. Like I, yeah, I'm just really excited, you know. When I, when I first when I first sort of like had it signed and sealed and stuff, I was just uh, my head was straight on next year, just thinking about the races and um, you know how the team is going to look, all that exciting stuff that you have on a kid, you know, the new bike rides and all that kind of thing. It's, it's yeah. just yeah, it's great. And how did the deal come about? Did you did you get in touch with the team? Have you an agent, or did they come to you? No, no, I'm um I haven't got an agent. Um, I I've been speaking to them quite a lot um throughout the year i spent you know i speak to a lot of teams <clears throat> throughout the year and try to just keep sort of peppering them anytime i get i do a good ride anytime i get like like whether that be like a result or even just training <clears throat> i tend to just like share my data and just 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 to kind of like probe them remind them i'm still here you know and yeah. then um i had a few um conversations and things and then sometimes it just takes a result you know and then everything clicks so i won those two commesses in belgium and then boom straight after that i had like um pretty much a couple offers in the pipeline and one more potentially coming in as well um but yeah i was just i was always like i, said, I was always pretty keen on on black spoke um i really like um the way they're going how how they're stepping up as well they're not sort of like going straight in and, and buying like a buying like a whole new team and like they're, they're just building like a really nice foundation and, and they, they want to grow a successful team so um and with me at my age like it suits me quite well yeah yeah and does it feel strange with even your existing team after so many years because you're there since you're nearly a junior i think yeah yeah no i've been there for years so uh yeah no i guess it is strange <clears throat> um i'll have to yeah get up to speed on how how you know things work in, in in another team to be fair like obviously i've done stuff with the national team so at least i've had um different voices and different different people to lean on it hasn't just been like um one ex exposure to racing for, for for the for the years but um no i think i think it'd be great um looking forward to it it's obviously you know i was lucky in a way to have a team like that for so long um and have made so many like you know great memories and things with them and for a long time you know like the team was um canyon were doing really well they were improving almost at the same rate that i was as a rider so it, it you know it suited me to stay where i was um they were improving all the time and and i had a lot of i was very i was comfortable there you know i had a lot i had a bit of say in, in how you know my season would look how you know how the team would look to some extent um so yeah i, I kind of made um yeah i, I don't know i've made, made nice home for myself there but yeah it was it, when an offer like that when an offer like that comes along you know it's it, it's pretty easy um you have to you have to sort of go for it yeah and I, you mentioned there now at your age um, did you ever did you, did you think the opportunity had passed? Because I know you've been close with World Tour teams in the in the past. Did you think the ship had sailed? Um, I think at the start of this season, yeah, yeah, I had because I made a decision at the end of last season that if I didn't make if I didn't go up to World Tour at the end of last season, that I was going to go, I'd go back to uni and do all of that and start. Um, I wanted to keep riding. Um, I wanted to keep riding for as long as I physically could, to be honest. As long as I was competitive in things um, and as long as I was enjoying it, I was always going to carry on riding. But I, I, I just started to think about, okay, what, what happens next? Because it's not sustainable in its current form. Um, so I think, yeah, coming into the year, I didn't really, I didn't think it was going to happen. Um, I had a few target races that I wanted to get well at. And then the rest of the time, I was kind of like, I just support the team and hope you know want to see the lads go well and just take I took a bit more of a sort of um I don't know elder older riders approach to it I guess um and even like the week of the commesses uh the one the race that I won mm. I, I was you know I was on the phone like to to you know potential employer 
speaking to him and, and, and effectively like verbally agreeing a, a work contract for next year. So like, yeah. I was fully like preparing for like what I was going to do alongside my riding. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like all of it just sort of uh, clicked. And yeah, like I've been, I've been on the, pre- I've been sort of knocking on the door for a while, you know, but it just, it gets, it gets harder like with age. And I think particularly at the moment, like the sport is also getting so, like it's getting younger as well. Like the juniors, the under-23s now, they're just, they're just outrageous because everyone, everyone, there's, there's a clear pathway into professional cycling now. So like kids are, kids are sort of like committing to it straight out of school. So. Yeah. So fortunately the ship had not sailed. Um, one thing that was mentioned during the year was after your win in the national championships, people were kind of very surprised by how emotional you were and how much it meant to you. Because lots of people I think thought here's another, an English guy coming over declaring for Ireland and just rocking up and winning the national championships. Can you tell us a little bit about your Irish kind of links, if you will, and just how much the national championships meant to you? Yeah. Um, well, I think, I, to be fair, I think the emotion was all wrapped up in that whole thing of like thinking that I would never do that and then obviously doing it. So there was, there was a lot that went into that. And then it was, a, I think it was actually quite, it was quite a, special moment for my dad as well like he having grown up in Ireland and living Brian um that was that, so that was that was quite nice and I also feel like nationals as well is actually it's like the only race of the year it's a real like family event you know mm. like um you know it's because because it's unsupported it's nothing to do with the team you know so we all travel there together I have my teammate Matt there but you know even him he's there with with, with Neil and his parent and his mum and stuff like and so it's one of those races that you can you can trace your sort of racing history back to when you're a youth and like racing um with them and for me it was like a particularly special day having fam- family there you know like i have I've, I've got more family members in ireland than i do um in the uk despite like growing up in the uk and, and things like that so yeah my connection with ireland has always been um is, is, is a special one in a way because like we we would always go on holiday there and spend a lot of time there so like every memory i have of in ireland is is, is really special to me like <clears throat> we didn't do the kind of big holidays like abroad or nothing like that like it, we'd go over and see the family and um so that's you know when i'm when i when i think back to when i was a kid and particularly like when i first started riding you know like ireland was the only safe place that i could actually go out and just go and be free like up in the cameras and stuff like that yeah, when I was back home, I had to do it on a closed circuit. So I hold so many like cherished memories to Ireland. Um that yeah, you know, like it is it is special to me. Um so yeah, I think it's it's fair enough that you know people people think like that, but I suppose ultimately it, it doesn't really matter because yeah, like it meant a hell a hell of a lot to me. So yeah. um that's 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 that really. Yeah, I think the Waterford uh, Wheeler's Twitter account knocked it on the head when they said you, you sounded like Ch- Prince Charles, which are very impressed with your uh, the emotion you displayed in winning it. And yeah. winning the national championships, <laughs> did that have a big influence, you reckon, on getting a pro deal? I think, um, yes, I also, but I think the way the race went was significant as well. So obviously having the jersey is great. But also, like, um, I remember, like, after the race and stuff, um, I took, <clears throat> I took like the data from the race and just like sent it to people. Like, you know, I was like, this is me at my best. Like, this is what you can have, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I think that was quite a big, a big thing at the time. Um, I don't think, I think people who, I don't think people that know Irish racing re- quite realise or quite, yeah, quite understand how competitive and how intense it is like doing nationals mm. um especially as maybe like what you might consider like one of the maybe if, you know people might consider me one of the strong riders at the time like it's so it's so hard like you can't just be the best rider in the race yeah. and expect to win there is so much more that goes into it so um and yeah i guess that's what the data showed in a way um and then yeah i think every every team manager loves the idea of having having a jersey like I think people have a real like um affinity to like the nation as well 
So there's a, there's a lot that goes into that. So um, yeah, I think it, I think it definitely helps. Yeah, the key the Kiwis, I suppose, would have a strong association with Ireland. We're both similar nations, I suppose, in lots of aspects. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I know that the average that the um, number of sheep per people is literally the same. It's identical. So that's one thing. That was the country. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, yeah, I think I think about maybe like five years ago, we were pretty comparable in rugby, but you can't really compare Ireland to New Zealand now. We're miles ahead. So absolutely. that's nice. Absolutely. They're, they're, they're a small developing nation in rugby now, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Yeah. So, maybe, maybe don't lead with that one when you're meeting management and stuff like that, like, you know. Well, when I went to meet the team and I thought, oh, here we go. A few lads here, can I, I can actually like talk to you about rugby. Yeah. And they all hate it. Really? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think they're just. I think it's like that thing. You know, it's like the country's national sport. I think it's just shoved down their throats for so long, and they're all okay. like, they're obviously, every bunch of skinny cyclists, so they're probably yeah. getting pounded around the field. Very good. And tell us a bit more about the team. So they're, as far as I believe, they were the world's number one <laughs> continental team this year. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, yeah, they cleaned up. Like um, they are phenomenal when it comes to like stage racing and things like that they just they are a team that is so um they are so they're stronger than some of their parts i guess you could say yeah. like and I, I i don't know if it's just like um if it's a kiwi thing you know like all, i'm sure that all the lads will know each other like really well from back home and stuff like that and whether it's a case that they will just pull strong together when they're when they're here in europe because they have that kind of like um I don't know that kind of like shared mentality of like yeah. being being the ones um, from from further afield or what, but yeah, in the stage races and stuff, they were just phenomenal. Um, and and it wasn't just like I mean, Aaron Gate had a fantastic year himself, but like it wasn't just him. You know, you had Mark Stewart winning races, uh, Luke Mudgeway, um, Tom Sexton's like a brilliant athlete. You know, like there, there's so many guys when you look through, they got yeah. great great strength and depth. And not like necessarily household names. So, um, yeah, they they really are. Um, yeah, they, they to me they they're very similar in a way of, you know. There's no names that really jump out. Off, yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you like maybe five Uno X riders yet. Yeah. They seem to. Um, yeah, they seem they all seem to be out there and performing. But the team is going to be based in Belgium next year, and I believe they have they bought a service course in Belgium, or yes, we have. They have a house in Avogem, so just south of Kortrijk, and there's a there's a service course well just around the corner. I haven't seen it yet. I've seen the house, and it's yeah, it's lovely, and it was great. Sort of like spending a bit of time with the lads. Um, so yeah, so that should be it. Should be good. I think you know for all major teams these days, like. Having a, having a base and a setup like that is is um, almost the standard. So, and will you be based in Belgium with him then, or will you still come over and back from the UK? Yeah, I see. I stay in the UK. Um, so yeah, I think I think I'll, I'll, I'll be there mostly, and then and then travel over. So, and then you know, say say if I have a few races over in Belgium, then thankfully you know we have the house there, which is sort of um, and do you know? What what's the plan for early season? Have you got your program yet? Are you going to team training camp or? No, it's a, it's a funny one because like they are they're obviously in New Zealand doing almost like their kind of um, Kiwi season, I guess. Yeah. Obviously, it's summer over there, yeah. so they've got the nationals in Jan. Um, so in in this sort of time that we usually have like sort of team camps, team get togethers and stuff like that, they're all going to be racing. So. Um, I believe the early season plan is to start in um, the Middle East. Uh, I haven't had anything confirmed yet, but I think that is the plan. So um, we'll get together then in, in, in February. So and they're, they're quite nice. I mean, there's certainly more relaxing races and starting in like um, a 1.1 somewhere in Holland or Belgium. And yeah, um, and yeah just turning out to be used as target practice for Wout van Art. So... <laughs> Uh, it'd be an easier, it'd be an easier sort of lead into the year. Uh, can you tell us of any of the equipment you'll be using next year? Has that been announced yet, or is it still under embargo? Yeah, I'm not sure how that. Uh, I haven't been sworn secrecy on any part. So, but no, we'll, we'll be using Pinarellos, yeah. um, which is great. 
and uh, we have we're using a Belgian kit um, manufacturer. So I yeah I've been hashing out with him designing designing the champs jersey and stuff like that, um, which won't look all that different to be fair. Although it does have a kiwi fern on the shoulder, which I thought was a bit uh, interesting. Okay. Bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. So um, that that that'd be cool. Um, and yeah, the bikes. So I'm already I'm training on a Pinarello at the moment, and yeah, they're 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 class. Like yeah. they are brilliant. Yeah. So um, and yeah. just nano group sets again. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Fair enough. And will there be a custom uh, painted Pinarello for you, or are you not a <laughs> big dog for that? No, I don't, I don't think there will be. Maybe I can wrap it or something. I'll get some electrical tape or something like that. But no, no, no. I'm not going to push my luck. So thank you. Thanks for that. Thanks for my glorious new contract. Uh, yeah. And I'm trying try not to get too big for my boots. So. No, no, no. Let, let's not piss off the team week one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Green Madonna so. and And finally, what would make next year a success for you? Good question. I mean, I just want to win some races. Like, I have a target in my head of races, how many races, like how many UCI races I'd like to win. Mm. And um, I'm, that's kind of it, really. It's, 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 it's a tricky one because it's obviously um, every, every year up until now, I've had a fairly uh, similar plan for the whole season. You know, yeah. I'd, I'd have my first, there'd be a few early races that I fancy, like the typical, like Limburg sort of star races that, um, our dens kind of kind of star races and, and things in Belgium, but really would be looking at like nationals at the end of June, have a little break after that, and then look and then look towards Tour of Britain at the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. Um, I believe we'll be back at Tour of Britain, but everything up until then is it's hard to say, you know. I, I um at the point after I've seen a calendar, I say, okay, like this, this and this, we'll see me, you know, I, I fancy those. Um anything that's got a bit of a grippy sprint in, um, like I'm I'm all for it. So yeah, a bit of climbing, a bit of cobbles, a bit of rain, a bit of wind. Like stick me in it, and I'll I'll get involved. So, good man. Yeah. Well, we wish you all the best for the season coming, Rory. Thanks, John. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs>